what's the biggest challenge you're facing right now and how could I help? Honestly, I, I know I'm not the only one going through this and you've probably heard this a million times, but time management is my biggest challenge. Um, and I took some notes in case you don't mind. I'm just going to read off of it. Sure. Um, the one thing I struggle the most with LR and RC, but mostly RC is I reread the passage way too many times. So whenever I'm going through the options in RC, I like read um, the first option and then go back to the passage and the second one and back. And I read it like six to seven times. What strategies do you have to effectively read a passage and also stay within time? Sure. Well, on your initial read, what are you looking for? Honestly, I try to um, pull out conclusions and then underline some key words. Um, in some instances, I read the options before I actually read the passage. So it gives me a better idea of what I'm looking for. Um, but the first time I read it, I just, I try not to scan, but that's what I end up doing. So it doesn't really make that much sense to me. And then I have to go back and digest it so many times. Right, yeah. right. Okay. So a couple of things we could unpack there. First off, you said you're underlining, right? Yes. So you're underlining, are you studying out of a book or on the computer or a tablet? Both book and computer. I have a few books and a lot of my resources are on computer as well. So, and which LSAT format are you going to take? Are you doing paper and pencil, ta uh, digital LSAT on tablet or flex, or you don't know? I don't know what it's going to be. I'm registered for the July LSAT. Um, it's looking like it's going to be flex. At this point, it's 50-50. Everyone's saying it's 50-50, but I'm not sure. I hope it's not flex. All right, we can talk about which format's better, which one you could hope for. But regardless, mm -hmm. you know you're not doing it on paper. Right. So, underlining in a book, if you are, in fact, doing that, is not going to be applicable to your testing format, right? Right. So, I, I would suggest doing what you can to simulate your reading comp prep like it's going to be on test day. Mm -hmm. Okay. So no more underlining in the book and ideally no more studying or taking practice tests in the book because you know that's not the one you're doing. Got it. And the next thing is, are you underlining on the computer at all? I'm highlighting, yes. Okay. Now, what percentage of the passage would you say you're highlighting? I'd say when I first started, it was a good 50 to 60 percent, but it's dropped a little bit because I've learned to look for specific keywords that would be applicable. So I'd say like a good 20-ish or lower. Good. Yeah. I mean, 20 is definitely much better than 60. So you're, you're trending in the right direction there. And are you doing these exams on L LSAC site? Um, I... Not really. I only did one on the LSAC site. Um, I have a like prep Kaplan prep tests on my computer, a good number of them. So that's what I use most of the time. Okay, cool. I would just want you to see, is the LSAC software, their highlighting tool, is it working well for you? Because some folks find it a little bit glitchy and imprecise and different simulation programs will actually be a little bit different. Some of them will work better than the LSAC one does which could actually be a drawback because you want to practice exactly like it's going to be for your experience. And if the highlighting tool is iffy for you, then you might not want to be reliant upon it. Okay. Okay. I will definitely look out for that. So that, that's one thing I'd be thinking about. The bigger thing I want to talk, touch on with you is your approach when you're reading the passage initially. And you mentioned something about looking at the questions first. Right. So there's about, seven questions per passage associated, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're reading all seven of those and then looking at the passage? Most of the time, yes. And I know that's not effective at all, but I just, I, as much as I'm focused on trying to manage my time, I think I'm making all of these mistakes that just make me not manage my time. So what, what approach would be better for you that wouldn't, that would serve you in terms of time management? Um, I think having a general understanding of the passage and also um, noting the keywords that would be applicable to most of the questions so I don't have to go back as many times as I do would be perfect, but I, it's not working out for me right now. If there were one thing you wanted to walk away from a passage with, one key detail or one key takeaway, what would that be? Mm -hmm. 
what's the one thing you want to walk away from a passage with? Um, I think a general understanding while um, being and staying aware of the main point that um, the passage is trying to pass across. Yes, exactly. The main point, the main point. That's what you want to walk away with. Okay. On your initial read, that's your takeaway. Everything else okay. pales in comparison. Okay. The other questions may focus on specific details, but you can go back for those details and find them when you need them. But the main idea, okay. you know there's going to be a question on that. It might be main idea, yeah. it might be primary purpose, or it might be both. Yeah. And there could be other questions that are general or global in nature. And your understanding okay. of the main idea will typically be enough to solve all of those. Okay. But seven questions, you, uh, I couldn't hold all seven questions in my head along with reading the passage and then going back to those questions. It's just too much. We have right. real limits on our short-term working memory. And mm -hmm. the LSAT pushes past those by design. And you see it especially in logic games, which is why diagramming is so useful there. Right, for sure. Thank you. Um, my second question would be, um, whenever I review the PTs that I do, um, I obviously, whenever you're going through some questions, especially in logical reasoning, you know they're not right. Um, so whenever I review, I usually don't review them because I know they're not right. But do you think it's beneficial for me to actually understand the reason why they're not right and review them as well, or just focus on the ones that I'm getting wrong and keep it streamlined and just keep moving? Any question that you've gotten wrong or had difficulty with is worth reviewing. And it's worth okay. reviewing why the right answer may have seemed unappealing, whether, you are or not you, whether or not you actually chose it. But if it seemed unappealing for any reason, that's worth investigating. And if a wrong answer appealed to you, whether or not you ultimately chose it, the fact that it gave you pause means that it's worth looking at deeper. It's worth analyzing what were the tricks or traps that made that wrong answer seem appealing. Okay. So when you look at it that way, there's actually quite a bit to review whenever you do okay. a single section or a single exam. Okay. So, um, yeah. So I guess I'll just keep reviewing all of the tempting answers and just let go of the ones that are not appealing at all um, and just not review them because obviously it was wrong and it's not really worth my time. Okay. Um, thank you for that. So my third question would be with LR. I always, always have an issue with um, weaken the argument questions. I do very well with other questions, especially strength and um, the strengthening the argument ones. But whenever it comes to which option weakens the arguments, I feel like my brain just goes to mush and I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just lost and I end up picking all of the wrong answers. So what approach would you recommend that I um, use towards questions built that way? Well, let me ask you this. How do you feel about flaw questions? I feel pretty comfortable with them. Yes, I feel comfortable with them. Um, yeah. And what about strengthening questions? I feel really great. I would say they're my top, top strongest LR section. Awesome. Well, the reason I ask is that both of those actually relate to weaken in some way. Strengthen okay. and weaken are obviously two sides of the same coin. Right. So if we take things in one direction to strengthen them, taking them in the opposite direction would weaken it. So you could look at any weakened question as if you were looking to strengthen that argument and then just do the opposite. In another sense, you could negate it. Okay. Or take it in the opposite direction. So like, if, for example, if you want to go to colder weather, on average, you would move away from the equator. If you wanted to right. move towards warmer weather, on average, you would move closer to the equator. Right. Different directions, but same mm -hmm. theme of okay. movement on a, along a vertical axis north to south. With flaw okay. questions, we're looking to simply identify a problem with the argument, but in weaken, we're looking to expose or widen the gap there, further problematizing the argument. So I want you to bring both the flaw perspective and the strengthened perspective to bear as you evaluate arguments that have weakened question stems. Okay. That's really, really helpful. Thank you.
Yeah, of course. And my last question would be, at what point before my test should I start doing time tests? Um, I think overall I do really well with all the PTs that I've been doing. Um, I score on like the high 160s, low 170s fluctuate, but time is just my issue. And I'm looking to do the July LSAT, like I said, but I haven't started doing any time tests yet. So at what point would you recommend that I start doing time tests since now I'm in May and I have just two months to go? Sure. Well, I've gotten the sense from our conversation that you've gotten a basic familiarity with the different sections of the exam. Yeah. Is that correct? I have, yes. So then I think it's not too early to start doing timed exams now. Okay. Just do, do one or two. Obviously, don't take them as being your ultimate potential because pacing and endurance are other elements to this exam on top of simply accuracy. So be patient with yourself. Give yourself time and know that your 10th timed exam will be a very different experience from your first timed exam. Right. And you, right. Could, do, you okay. could do, depending on your availability, your schedule, you could do one or two a week. Okay. The other thing I'll add for you is, as, you, as we said, at the moment, speaking in early May, we don't know whether the July LSAT will be a flex or a regular five-section exam. As we're thinking, there's a good chance it'll be flex. And so I would do at least a handful of, of exams in each format. Right. Okay. And the yeah. software on LSAC site will let you practice in both the digital LSAT format on tablet as well as the computer online format. And one strategy you could use is do a handful of three-section exams as well as a handful of five-section exams, or you could do a three-section exam, take your break, then do the next two sections. Your first three sections are your LSAT flex results, and your full five-section experience is your in-person result, obviously adjusting for the experimental and the raw score conversions. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much. This has been really, really helpful. Yeah. Of course. I'm glad to hear it. Before we sign off, what would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? Um, there's two of them, actually. The first one was uh, about RC and just reminding myself that I need, well, you reminding me that I need to focus on the main point of the passage instead of trying to um, limit myself and trying to figure out the answers to all of the seven questions the first time I read the passage. And the second point is um, with LR, um, will weaken the argument questions that I should, um, a good approach to uh, solving those questions is try to widen the gap and finding the problem instead of um, just doing whatever I've been doing before and just trying to read through and figure it out. Um, but pretty much just focus everything that I've been doing with strengthen, but the opposite. Awesome. Well, keep in touch and let me know if you need anything at all as you move forward. Will do. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.